I think we understand the spiritual dimension of the first part of Genesis 2.18. And Jehovah God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. It's not good that Christ is alone bearing the sins of his people. Why is it not good? Because he has become sin for them and is worthy to die. Now, after he dies alone, he brings forth much fruit. And that would be the whole company of the elect, all that God has saved. But what about the second part of the verse? I will make him a help me for him. Does that also have a spiritual meaning? And yes, of course it does. God did create species of creatures, male and female. He created rabbits and elephants and monkeys and deer and all the creatures and the fish and everything, male and female, in order that they would reproduce. There could be future generations of all these creatures because in God's wisdom, it requires male and female to reproduce. And so far, God has only created man. He's alone. Historically, there is only Adam, and he has no female. There is no wife, no woman. And so when God says, I will make him a help me for him, and he then proceeds to make the woman. By causing Adam to experience a deep sleep, he takes a rib and he makes the woman. We know that is the true historical record of how God created mankind. And because we know that that is the actual events that occurred, we almost naturally conclude that when God says, I will make him a help meet for him, that he's referring to the woman. I will make him a help meet for him. And then later, at the end of verse 20, after all the animals have been brought, but for Adam, there was not found a help meet for him. And then verse 21 God causes the deep sleep to fall on Adam, and finally, the woman is created. She's made. So we're directed, really, in our thinking to conclude the woman is the help me for the man. Eve is the help me for Adam. But I don't think it's possible that the woman is the help me for the man. Spiritually, We have two problems. The first problem is the wording of the verse, the wording of the statement. I will make him a help me for him. And the problem is, why does God repeat the word him? In other words, why didn't God say, I will make a help me for him? Just very direct, very understandable, and you only use the word him once. I will make a help me for him. That's how we understand what's being said. That's how we've traditionally, historically understood what is being said. I will make a help me for him, and we take that to mean the woman. But that's not what God said. Rather, he said, I will make him a help me for him. The word him is a prefix in the Hebrew that's attached to other words, and it's there twice. It is in the original Hebrew two times, and so we wonder why double the pronoun, the masculine pronoun, why repeat it? And so that's the first problem. And the second problem is our understanding, I will make him a help me for him. And in the past, we've understood that the woman is the help for the man. Actually, that is true in marriage. It is true in relationships between man and woman, husband and wife. The woman, the wife, does help the man, the husband. But we could also say the man helps the wife just as much. There is really no special call for the woman to be of more help to the man than the man to help the woman, his wife. Is there? No. No, there isn't. Each are called upon to be of assistance to one another, to help one another, to love one another. And yet, spiritually, here's the problem. We've already seen how God uses Adam as a figure of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Romans chapter 5, verse 14, 
Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. Adam is definitely a figure. E. Bible and Mr. Camping and Family Radio often said that people are a type and a figure of so-and-so. For instance, Pharaoh or King Nebuchadnezzar is a type of Satan. Or David is a picture and type of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're constantly using that language. And it is true that God uses types and figures. And all the people I just mentioned, they are types and figures of Satan or Christ and so forth. But God doesn't always make it so explicit as he has here with Adam. Adam is a figure of Christ, according to Romans 5, 14, the word of God, the Bible. So when we find Adam in view, and we saw that it was not good that the man, Adam, should be alone, we related that to Christ, rightly. Well, it's the same man in the second part of the verse. I will make him a help me for him. Adam is still in view. And Adam is a figure of Christ, and Christ is God. And this is the problem, because when we look up the word help in the Bible, and this word that's used here, a help me, when we look up that word, we do not find that man helps God, or that man is a help to God, or that the elect are a help to God. We find, rather, it is always God who is man's help, who is the help of his people, the ones that he has saved, the elect. For instance, in Exodus 18, verse 4, And the name of the other was Eliezer, for the God of my father, that he was mine help, and delivered me from the sword of Pharaoh. And their help and deliverance often go together. And deliverance in the Bible points to salvation. In Psalm 79, verse 9, Help us, O God, of our salvation for the glory of thy name, and deliver us, and purge away our sins for thy name's sake. That is help. In Hebrews 4, 16, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. There we see it's clearly salvation. Obtaining mercy and finding grace is what helps men because of our sin. We desperately needed mercy. We desperately needed God's grace. And so God helped. In Isaiah 49, verse 8, Thus saith Jehovah, In an acceptable time have I heard thee, and in a day of salvation have I helped thee, and I will preserve thee and give thee for a covenant of the people to establish the earth, to cause to inherit the desolate heritages. And here, the acceptable time, the day of salvation, God helped in the way of saving. He saved his people in the set time of salvation. And so when we look at the word help, this word in Genesis 2.18, it doesn't lead us to verses where we find people, we find man, sinners that are giving help to God in some way or not even doing service to God and that being identified as some kind of help to God. No. No, look up the word and its related words, and we see that God is our help. Mine eyes look unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh in the name of the Lord, the name of Jehovah, Jehovah's Savior. He is mine help and my shield and my great defense. It is the salvation of God that is our help. It is him granting mercy, bestowing grace upon the sinner that helps us in the time of need, in the day of salvation. 
So when we come to this verse and we find this word help, and in the past we've understood it to refer to the woman, isn't that how we've understood it? I will make him a help meet for him, and we've thought that it meant God will make a woman who will help Adam. She will be of a help to him as he serves God. She will help him in various ways. And we think of the marriage relationship. She will be close to him and love him and care for him and so forth. Well, all those things are true as husband helps wife and wife helps husband physically in the world. But it's not true spiritually. The woman is not made a help for the man. The woman being the elect, the body of Christ and the man being Christ, eternal God. God doesn't need our help. He doesn't need the help of elect, those that he has saved. It's the other way around. We desperately need his help. And so that's what God did. I will make him, and him must be a reference to the Lord Jesus Christ. I will make him Christ a help me for him, the body of Christ. And yes, historically it's referring to Adam. But remember, God said of Adam in Genesis 5, male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam. So when God is looking at Adam, he saw Eve. He called their name, male and female. He saw the body of Christ. He saw all that God would save, as well as Adam also has been placed in the Garden of Eden, which is that outward representation of the kingdom of heaven. And so here the two pronouns are teaching us that God will make Christ a help. What is God's help? Salvation. I will make him salvation meet or suitable for him, for the men, Adam and Eve, for the people of God, the elect people of God that God has predestinated to save. And then we have explanation. We have an understanding now why there's two pronouns him. And also we no longer have that difficulty of the word help. Now we correctly have it referring to God. God will make Christ the help, the salvation for the body of Christ that Adam can also typify. 